Today I'm doing a slightly different video um, to my usuals because I thought it's coming to the end of January, people had New Year's resolutions or things that they wanted to do for this year and I feel like it's a good time to check in at the end of the first month of the year and see how you're feeling and how you're doing. January is always a weird one for everyone, I feel like there's a lot of pressure to like be doing certain things and sometimes that pressure can like just end up making you feel worse. So it's good to find a way of like improving things about your life but without like putting too much pressure on yourself or yeah just feeling bad because you're not doing stuff. So I thought like instead of just giving out like advice to like a range of people who I like don't know what you guys want to hear I thought I'd just talk about like what I'm doing this year and maybe that will give you some tips on like yeah just how to make your life a bit better I'm in like a very good place in my life right now and I'm feeling really good and happy and I want to share some tips so that maybe you can feel a bit better too so I know some people are a bit anti um, New Year's resolutions but I, I do think it's a good way like not necessarily a resolution but just like it's a good idea to check in with yourself at the beginning of the year and just think about what you want from the coming year so for me I decided like I spent I worked a lot in December at the pop-up and I wasn't super social I didn't get to see my friends that much or like do different things and I was in a real like nesting mood I just wanted to like stay in a lot like work on my room like do like indoor like home hobbies and stuff and now I'm like so over that and I want to like go out more and like say yes to things and try diff different things and like push myself on like doing things by myself which I love doing so yeah my current vibe is that I just like I'm feeling really really social like I've got a real urge to like be social hang out with people that I don't know as well I have a really close group of girlfriends who I live with and I love them and we do like so much stuff together and have such a nice time together and I feel like I want to like grow my circle a bit and spend time with people as well in addition to the girls I live with like I want to spend time with people that maybe I wouldn't make such an effort with in the past because I was like really comfortable in my group of friends and I actually think it's really important to like spend time with a bunch of different people and whenever I have like hung out with new friends I've had such a nice time so I'm really on that at the moment and I just feel like I'm 25 I got really comfortable with my uni group of friends and kind of always said about myself like oh, I'm just not that good at making friends or I'm like I'm not great with new people but actually I am and the more time that I spend doing that the more I realise that like it's really good for you to like just talk to different people hang out with different people and th with those new people you do different things as well which is really really nice so that's one of the things that I'm doing at the moment is just spending time with friends friends are like I really feel like for women this one is for women like men will come and go like they're amazing like they're so much fun like they bring you love like all these things but they don't fulfill your life and you shouldn't rely on them for fulfillment in your life like they're we love them but they're not um they're not going to bring you like everything that you need in your life and relying on yourself and on your friends for fulfillment is the best move for your happiness and I really really believe this like if you rely on one one person even one friend for fulfillment for your life for your happiness and everything like it's just not going to work out that way because one person can't provide all that for you but if you rely on a group of like people that you really trust and you really love and you have a lot of fun with then you're just going to be way happier so that's what I'm doing at the moment as well which I love my skin has been a journey over the last few years typically it gets a lot better in summer and a lot worse in winter and that's like hasn't changed but since basically I was on the pill for like seven years I went on it for my acne and for my periods and then I just was on it forever and then I was like this actually I think it's making me a bit crazy <laughs> like really like moody and just yeah I wasn't myself so then I went on the coil the hormone coil which I love so much I highly highly recommend it but my skin did get worse when I went off the pill because the pill is good at controlling acne and stuff 
so since then which was about three or four years ago my skin has gotten worse this is it currently um and i think in lockdown i got into like trying to solve it through skincare which in my opinion is a huge mistake especially if you have acne because it just irritates your inflamed areas so i just tried to solve it through skincare i think that actually made it worse then I went on um, different, I used different, then I went on antibiotics. I don't think that antibiotics help for skin, personally. I'm not a doctor, but it's just been my anecdotal experience. And I think it's just not good for like your gut and everything like that to be going on them for like six months at a time. And I just didn't find that the results were good anyway. So basically I've just tried so many things and what I'm currently doing is a super stripped back skincare routine. I cleanse with the Inky List Oat Cleansing Balm. I moisturize with this moisturizer that my sister got me from Korea. Sometimes I put an oil on instead of moisturizing. And that is literally it, skincare wise. I, I think that the skincare industry, I'm just kind of unsubscribing from it for the most part. Like, I just think it's great if you've got good skin, you can make it better. But if you've got skin problems, then it just aggravates them and you just end up spending so much money on stuff that doesn't help and we live in a capitalist society and we get convinced that spending money on things will solve your problems and it doesn't and i've just spent so much money on skincare and like not really gotten results so i'm not doing that anymore keeping it super simple i go to get these facial treatments i've only had two so far so i'll share it once I've like had a few more and I'm like seen what the results are and if I recommend it then I will share it but so far I'm really happy with it and then the other thing that I'm doing which I touched on in my last video is like hygiene wise for your skin I'm just being really really careful with that so like changing my pillowcases every two days I air dry my face I don't use towels I wash my makeup brush after every single use all these things that you would have heard people say to you before oh also I don't touch my face if I need to pop it, like I literally, if I have a spot, I'll literally wait until it's like about to burst and then I'll get a little cotton pad, cut it in half and like squeeze it like that, not use my nails. I'm with such a picker and a popper before, it's like so fun, but you can't do it. It just makes the scarring worse, which is like one of my main problems is um, scarring. I still, I still do get red marks if I just, if I do this, but it seems to be better and they just heal way quicker because they're not like a scab. So yeah, you would have heard people say these things to you before, but um, I actually really do think they make a difference, especially the touching your face. It's just like a bacterial thing. But what I do find is I can make major progress with my scarring. And then as soon as I get a spot, the scarring gets worse. And I think it's because it's like when your body is inflamed or the skin is inflamed, then the red shows up more because like your skin is inflamed. So that's why I'm trying to like minimize inflammation also through my diet. I have tried in the past to like cut down on my sugar and I struggled with it because I was always doing it for the wrong reasons. I was always trying to do it to lose weight and I don't do anything like that anymore. Like I'm a lot better with how I feel about my body and like what things I'm doing, you know, diet wise and stuff. Like I stopped going on diets a long, long time ago, but I wanted to reduce my sugar because I do think that it's really connected to your skin and your gut and I think your gut is connected to your skin and it all kind of works together and like refined sugar is just like, it just inflames your body, your system basically. So I still have sugar obviously, I have like a couple of times a week as a treat and I definitely enjoy it more as well but since I started doing it more for like a health reason and for a reason that isn't like, I don't know, not aesthetic because my skin is aesthetic but like not for my, not to lose weight basically. I found that it helped, like it, I've stuck to it so much more. And I find that with everything, like with exercise as well. Like I used to exercise to lose weight and then I'd always fall off and like just wouldn't stick to it. I've been doing Pilates now for, well I'll talk about exercise in a sec, but since I started doing it for health, mental health and physical health, I've like never been so consistent with it in my life. And that was like four years ago. So yeah, I would really recommend like, if you are deciding to implement health changes that revolve around food to make sure that it's in a healthy way and to not like 
base it on losing weight unless that's like something that's like a healthy choice for you but for me personally like it's not healthy for me to like start worrying about weight and stuff like that obviously i'm saying this and like i definitely have days where i struggle with it with my weight and like just the way that i perceive myself i think a lot of women struggle with body dysmorphia and stuff like that but for the most part i feel good to be doing these changes because it's like a positive thing rather than a negative thing it's less like you can't have this and it's bad if you do it's more like this isn't great for you let's like try and make you feel good through what you eat and i do eat really healthily and it makes me feel good and i look forward to all my meals because they're so nutritious and delicious like yeah so exercise wise i literally love exercise so much i rely on it so much for feeling sane feeling healthy i've been doing pilates for four years now i do it at frame which is a studio in london they have studios all over london and um yeah i just really like the women that work there are amazing and the guys and the bathrooms are really nice the instructors are amazing and i just love pilates so much i know that everyone is getting on it now and it makes me so happy because it is such a good form of exercise because it's super mindful that like you do like breathing exercises it's kind of like yoga in that way but physically it's like really strenuous and i'm not a huge cardio girl so i'll try and do a bit of cardio but pilates is my thing so I do that a few times a week and I literally love it. And then I just do a bit of like cardio as well. Like once or so a week, I'll do like uphill walking on the treadmill or I'll do a spinning class because um, the gym that I go to has, um, what's it called, Peloton bikes. So yeah, I mean, I would just recommend finding the thing that you enjoy the most and sticking to that, like trying new things and all that stuff. But um, once you find something that works for you, just stick to it and I think find an amount that makes you feel good rather than make you feel bad because sometimes if you work out too much or you do something that's not like I don't know like I went through a phase of doing kickboxing because I thought oh it's just such a good workout for you but I wasn't actually enjoying it that much and I just felt so sick afterwards because it was so intense so I stopped doing that but moving my body is like one of the things that makes me literally feel the best and it just allows me to process all my thoughts for the day like if I've had a busy day at work, to just go and do Pilates for an hour, I kind of organise my head. It's such a good feeling, I love it. So I would really recommend, yeah, like working out basically, like implementing something like that into your routine. So for me this year, I'm just gonna continue with that, but try to do a bit more cardio. An old therapist of mine told me that doing like one session of cardio, like half an hour or something, is the equivalent of taking a quarter of an antidepressant because of the endorphins that it releases in your body. So yeah, I I do try and do it once a week basically because I know that it does make me feel better and I do feel so good afterwards. There's so many different forms of cardio that you can do. You can find one that works for you. So hobbies are super important and for me it's like a difficult one because my job is my hobby which means that it is really consuming and I'm thinking about it all the time but I love it that way and I wouldn't change that at all and most of the ideas I have like creative ideas I have for work or business strategy ideas to be fair happen outside of work so to be thinking about it all the time it's no bad thing but yeah another one of my hobbies is like it's reading but I don't I, I'm always got a book on the go these days, like I like to read, but recently I've been enjoying audiobooks, so I guess that's technically not reading, but oh my god I'm obsessed, I just listened to the um, Harry, Prince Harry one, which I loved, I would die on a hill for those two, um, I'm not going to get into politics here, but I, I love those two, um, uh, as in him and Megan, and I listened to his audiobook, I have an audio audible subscription and literally the only books that i've got on it are celebrity memoirs i'm so fascinated fascinated by celebrity culture i enjoy it so much just kind of from like a outside perspective it's just so interesting to me like the like pitfalls of it the good things about it like celebrities lives like i just find it fascinating like we've created this monster that is fame and like it's interesting and on a lot of the time sad to hear how that's like affected people's lives and how they kind of have this peak and then it's like suddenly goes really bad like Britney and everything like that so I listened to Jeanette McCurdy's book Miriam Margulies, um, Harry, Emrata, like just all the classics I think I'm gonna do Chana from Friends next <laughs> or there was another one that I really wanted to listen to but um, yeah then I'm also reading 
this book at the moment. I'm really enjoying this book at the moment. It's just nice to have something physical to read as well. So often in the morning, I'll read for half an hour or before I go to bed because I'm quite good at like having no screen time at the beginning and the end of the day. I'll read instead or like since I've exited my tiny handbag era and I'm in my medium to large, no, medium handbag era, I always have room for a book in my bag, which I'm loving. So I've been reading on the tube or like, I don't know if I'm like waiting for an appointment, I can just read. Obsessed. I'm acting like I'm the first person to ever think of doing that, but <laughs> reading is fun. But just finding a hobby that is, that makes you feel happy. It's just such a good way to spend your time rather than being on your phone and watching TV all the time. Don't get me wrong. I do the phone thing a lot <clears throat> and I love watching TV. Like I'm a big series girl, but yeah. Reading is good, so I would recommend that. So my morning routine is pretty good. I'm quite disciplined and I really enjoy being disciplined and structured. It makes me feel relaxed. I have OCD, so to be disciplined with myself, it just makes me feel calm. So I wake up at 7.30, I read, or if I need to wash my hair that day, that's what I'm doing. But I wake up at 7.30 and basically don't touch my phone for half an hour. And this makes me feel so good. I also suffer from migraines. So if I go on my phone first thing in the morning, like I'm guaranteed to have a headache all day. And when I was younger, my mum would be like, it's because you're on your phone all the time. And I'd be like, it's not that, I just have migraines. But now I'm like, yeah, it definitely makes a difference. So sorry, mum, you were right. Yeah, don't touch my phone for the first half an hour of the day. And it just gives me a lot of clarity as well. I feel like I have a fog in my head if I'm like, on my phone from as soon as I wake up. So then I'll read, I always have a cup of tea. Then I have a really healthy breakfast, like Greek yogurt, fruit. And then, yeah, I take an hour and a half to like have that time at home before I go into work. Yeah, 7.30 till nine. Then I go to work at nine. But just to have, like, I've never been the type to wake up, have a shower, get dressed and go, like in 20 minutes. I just feel like I don't have time to set up my day right mentally and like think about what I want to do that day. So I would really recommend, if structure is something that you enjoy, like obviously some people it just doesn't really work and that's so fine because everyone's different, but if you're like me, then yeah, it's a really good thing to do. And then in the evening kind of mirror that, so like no phone for the last half an hour of the day, I'll try and read or do something <clears throat> non-screen related. I always have dinner with the girls that I live with and that is so nice because you can like ask people about their day, like talk to other people, just hang out. I love it and we always cook for each other so it's literally like the nicest setup. I'm very grateful for that. And then um, yeah that's my evening time and I just feel like having that structure and discipline every single day. I love it. What I used to do in lockdown is go for a walk in the morning like I'd wake up, put like trackies on over my PJ, put on a coat and go for a walk and I actually loved doing that so I might do that again at some point. But yeah that's my morning, morning routine. There are loads of different types of rest and when you're feeling burnt out or tired, it's not always because you're not sleeping enough, although you should be sleeping enough. I sleep like nine hours a night. <laughs> I need a lot of sleep. But um, there are other types of rest. So there's like social rest, which for me is like hanging out with friends, like doing something social. It really recharges me. I'm definitely not 100% an extrovert. I think I'm a bit of a combo of introvert, extrovert, like most people, but I, I can recharge with other people and I can recharge by myself and getting older I've gotten better at like realizing which I need and very often I do need to just be by myself and honestly I'll talk about this in a sec but being by myself is like the best thing as well so physical rest is like sleep and then also like exercise so just moving your body can make you feel more energized it sounds counterintuitive but obviously it does actually work Sensory rest is something that I really was working on towards the end of last year and really carrying on that into the new year, which is like, like I find myself getting really overstimulated by noise sometimes. Like if I've been listening to music all day, then I listen to the radio on the drive home. Sometimes it just, I notice that it makes me really irritable and like puts me in a bad mood basically. So I've really been practicing sitting in silence and it is the nicest thing. Like if I'm completing a task, like, putting away my laundry or tidying my room or I don't know just something to sit in complete silence and do it is it makes me more mindful in the tasks that I'm doing and I just 
it allows me to like for my brain to just calm down a bit so i'd really recommend trying that if you feel the same way sometimes about noise it could also be like visual all that stuff like dimming the lights i'm a big mood light girl like i can be really overstimulated by light as well so i'm really into mood lighting and i have a lot of cute lamps in my room like my miffy one and loads of candles and stuff and it's my favorite thing to do to get into bed at night turn on my lamps and my candle and just chill it's the nicest thing emotional rest is another thing that's really important like if you're an overthinker or you struggle with anxiety you can really overthink stuff in your head and ruminate on stuff emotional rest is allowing yourself to either feel those feelings or talk to someone else about it or to detach from it as well so sometimes if my thoughts are getting a bit crazy I'm just be like, I'm just gonna step away from this thought process for a sec. Take a minute and doing that, um, I mean, for me, often it is just talking to friends. <laughs> I'll talk to friends and I'll be like, I'm feeling this way and I know it's a bit silly and I know that it's not really like grounded in reality, but I'm still feeling it. And just to talk it through with someone is really good as well. So there's all these different types of rest that you can do. So definitely don't reduce like feeling tired to just not getting enough sleep because you can feel very emotionally drained, physically drained, all these things. Um, and it can be solved by so many different things. And I also think that eating well is a really big help to that as well. If you're putting food into your body that like is super processed or it's not great for you, it doesn't like make you physically feel good as well as mentally. So looking after your body in that way can be really good. The last thing I'm gonna talk about is saying yes to stuff. I'm really into this at the moment. Like it's just so fun. Like I don't know if anyone's seen the movie Yes Man. I'm not talking about that sort of level of saying yes. But for example, like if a work opportunity comes up, someone like invites me you know to do something i'll just say yes to doing it if a friend's like let's go on holiday here i'll just like say yes to doing it anything that's suggested by anyone that i'm like you know when you have those situations you're like oh should i do it i don't know i'm just like doing stuff and um sometimes that means saying yes to myself as well so if i'm like should i do that thing by myself or that person i don't know too well said let's go for a drink I'll just do it and it makes me feel so good to kind of push yourself. I feel like we're all on this earth trying to make like what well, we should be like trying to in, like have the most fun life that we can while we're here and I'm really feeling that at the moment of just like we're just wanting to have the most fun and the most enjoyment and sometimes that is by myself as well and I'm really loving that so having that kind of positive and like open mindset is something that I'm really trying to carry through this year because so far it's been great and um, yeah I'm loving it but I also need to say no to myself too sometimes because I've been buying too much and I say yes to everything in that respect so I'm trying to be more disciplined with that but anyway hopefully you enjoyed this little vibe check on how we're all feeling in January if you have any questions just drop me a comment i'd be really happy to talk to you guys about any of this stuff and if you want to talk about one of these things in more like if you want me to talk about one of these things in more depth in a future video just let me know and i would really i love talking about these things i talk about it with my friends all the time so i'm super happy to do the same with you guys so yeah hopefully you enjoyed this video and have a lovely rest of your day